Seek it. Seek peace and pursue it. Prioritize this. But in your hearts, set apart Christ as Lord. So you see, the first simple, basic thing to do to get this life organized right, whatever's going on around us, is to set apart Christ as Lord in your heart. So he really stresses that. You want to love life and see good days, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from deceitful speech. It's, uh, I don't know why, it's a human, strong human tendency to misrepresent things verbally. Misrepresent things about ourselves, misrepresent things about other people, misrepresent things that are going on in the world. It's just a human tendency. It's one of the strong indicators that there's something wrong with the human psyche. Misrepresenting. And he's saying, be careful. Now, some of us grew up in such a way, or, or we just decided, or we learned, or whatever, and we really do try to be honest. But even in that situation, we have to be careful with this. We have to think about it. You know, how honest am I? Especially with myself. And especially with God. How honest am I? How honest dare I be? Because, you know, if there is any one person in the universe you cannot fool, guess who it is? God. You can fool yourself. You can fool your neighbors. But be careful with this, he says. Must turn from evil and do good. Must seek peace and pursue it. Now I'd like to, I just want to stress that line for a little bit because he kind of stresses it. Because the seek and pursue are very active words. They're focused words. And he's saying, uh, our, our world is hurt for lack of this. Relationships are hurting for lack of this. Your heart may be hurt for lack of this. Seek it. Seek peace and pursue it. Prioritize this. Peter is, now he's quoting the Old Testament, but he's quoting this to people who are going through it. And he's saying, yeah, I know, I know. I, I really do know. I mean, he's been in the same kind of situation himself. I really do know. Now, in this situation, seek peace and pursue it. A big deal. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and His ears are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Now, I know with our good evangelical theology since the Reformation in the 1500s, we can take the word righteous and say, well, all it means is you believe in Jesus, and therefore you're righteous. And I, I'm not going to prove that. However, that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about how you behave. He's saying, you know, those people who do these things, watch their mouth, discipline themselves for how they treat others, who seek peace and pursue it, those people, he says, God will listen to. You want to be listened to? Well, here's some guidance. Put this stuff at the top of the list. Learn to do these things. The better we learn this, the better we get listened to. And that's a wonderful promise. His ears are attentive to their prayer, but the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Okay, next slide. Whoever's up there. <laughs> who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But, now you know, as soon as he writes that, as soon as they hear it, they're going to think, who's going to harm me if I'm eager to do good? Well, let me list you a list here. You know, there's quite a few people in my town that are willing to harm me, even though I'm eager to do good. So he goes on. But, but the principle is good. Generally, people don't want to hurt you if you're good. And generally, they will come to your defense. But not always. So he says, who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But... Even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear. Do not be frightened. Whoa, what a line. Now again, he's quoting the Old Testament. But he's bringing it into a situation where they have a lot of reason to be afraid. For some reason, the people who are bothering them are also afraid. They're afraid of them. 
And they have no reason to be, but they are. So they're afraid of the Christians. The Christians have very good reason to be afraid of them. And Peter writes into their midst and says, don't be afraid like they're afraid. But in your hearts, set apart Christ as Lord. So you see, <coughs> the first simple, basic thing to do to get this life organized right, whatever's going on around us, is to set apart Christ as Lord in your heart. And that's a good question to consider. Where is He? Where is He in your thinking? What is His significance to you? Does it matter to you what He thinks? Does it matter to you what He says? Does it matter to you what He does and has done? In your heart, set apart Christ as Lord. Then He says this interesting thing. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. So, so here they are, being persecuted and harassed, and he tells them, now, you know, if you ever get the chance, and you will, somebody will say, how, how can you be so hopeful? Or why are you so hopeful? Why are you such a positive person? It irritates me to death. You know? And they ask. And he says, be ready. Give them an answer. Now, my answer can't include the whole Bible. It can't include all of theology and all of church history. He says you give them an answer for why you have hope. So if you've got any hope, figure out why. And then say it. And it may or may not seem brilliant to you. But it'll be real. You know? So he says, think, this, think about it. Why do you have hope? It's not why the pastor has hope. Or not why you should have hope. Why do you have hope? Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. Next one. But, careful. Do this with gentleness and respect. You know how easy it is to judge other people. <laughs> the easiest thing in the world sometimes. And maybe they have behaved badly toward us. Or maybe they don't exactly have a nice attitude. But they ask the question. They ask the question, why, why do you think like this? Or why is your life like this? Answer it. And with gentleness and respect. Which sometimes demands an enormous amount of self-management. Because I can be pretty worked up, and so can you. And freaked out sometimes, or just plain scared, you can't say the right thing, you had no idea what to say. Gentleness and respect tell them what you do, in fact, personally think. Otherwise you'd be lying, right? Tell them what you think. Why do you have hope? So that... Those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. It's a wonderful thing when that happens. You know, first they, they mock you or they make fun of you, they insult you, and then they start to get a clue or the environment around them starts to change, the attitudes around them start to change a little bit, and so then they start to feel slightly embarrassed and they say, Ah, oh, I was just kidding. You know, or can't you take a joke? Or they modify it somewhat. Whatever stage they're at in the process of coming around, we still have to be gentle and respectful because that's what will give. That's what will pull them in. And that's what will take the grace of God in our lives. Because I think it's a key verse of the chapter and it's really a pretty key verse in the whole Bible. It says, So then, those who suffer according to God's will, and ladies and gentlemen, that's all of us. If we can take all the pain in all of our lives, past and present, and distill it into a quart jar, it would be an exceedingly dangerous jar full of stuff. It would be horrible. There's a lot of pain sitting in this room. And it doesn't matter who's here. 
there would be a lot. So then, those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to their faithful Creator and and what? Continue to do good. Oh man, Peter, I want something more. I don't know. Something with some pizzazz to it, you know? Something with some intensity to it. But he just says, so then, those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves. Earlier translations say commit your soul or commit your heart. Commit themselves to their faithful creator and continue to do good. Seek it. Seek peace and pursue it. Prioritize this. But in your hearts, set apart Christ as Lord. So you see, the first simple basic thing to do to get this life organized right, whatever's going on around us, is to set apart Christ as Lord in your heart.